Okay, I wanted to show one more scene, and, and this is a scene that uh, specifically makes use of infinite scrolling volumes or the ISV feature of RTXGI. Uh, there's a lot going on with this scene, and if you saw my uh, GDC talk about this, um, uh, this is a fully ray trace scene, uh, so it's doing uh, uh, RTXDI lighting, uh, uh, ray traced reflections, so and of course RTXGI, so there's a lot happening here, um, DLSS and so on, but I want to narrow, for the purposes of this talk, I want to narrowly focus on the RTXGI aspect. So here we can get an idea of what RTXGI brings to the table um, in this kind of environment. We're actually using a, a very uh, small amount of uh, uh, raster skylight just to create some ambient fill and I'll take the the RTX GI away in order to so we can see what that looks like so right now this is with RTX GI on and you can see there's a lot of dynamic range uh, the trees are in you know in the near distance there are um, the, the canopies are catching the light but creating a really good amount of shadow underneath without completely going to black if I turn off RTXGI, that's what we see, right? So this is just with a uh, raster skylight. You can see what that does. Now, as I moved into this environment and got away from the brighter elements, the tone mapper and eye adaptation kicked in and it got a little bit brighter. So again, just reinforcing that earlier point, this is how post-process can affect the look of things, right? If you uh, if you if you clamp your post-process volume or your values uh, to, to be much tighter, the, what we're looking at right now could either be much brighter or much darker. Um, uh, but here I have it in sort of a medium dark tone. Um, and, you know, if we pull away from it, it starts to appear even even more dark. So that's just that's just, you know, post-process doing its thing. Um, but you can see the scene with just a little bit of raster skylight fill. Uh, and no RTX GI. And now I'll turn RTX GI back on and you can see what that does. Um, so it gives it a lot more uh, depth because this is one of the, you know, RTX GI isn't just infinite color bounce lighting. It also does uh, soft shadow occlusion um, in areas where you'd expect it to, to do such things. Um, any geometry that's visible to um, ray tracing has the capability of not just producing those GI rays, but also the occlusion that goes with it. So yeah, and just to keep my scene, like I said, just to keep it from going completely black uh, in certain areas, I, I, I set the skylight to a very small value. I think in this case, something like 0 0.05. Um, and I, I felt like for this, that works. It doesn't go too far. Um, you know, it gives me just a, a tiny amount of color fill in uh, what would otherwise be very dark areas. Again, here you can see with the GI on and GI off and GI on. So as I was saying, uh, this map makes use of infinite scrolling volumes. Uh, now, uh, what is that exactly? There's a, a, a GI volume that is centered on the player that travels with him. And the probe points um, uh, uh, move around dynamically in the scene. I mean, GI has the capability to be, RTX GI could be uh, fully dynamic in this way. Um, and uh, for uh, distant details, anything outside of that volume that's around the player, um, there's a, a, a much larger DDGI volume that uh, is set to be static, so it's highly performant, um, and the uh, the the player ISV volume blends with that uh, larger sort of uh, lower quality uh, GI volume. Here again, I'll turn off RTX GI, so we can see that the distant GI uh, is making a pretty decent contribution, but not an overwhelming one, and even with um, uh, probes spaced really far apart, uh, you, you can still get some nice depth and shadow out of it. It's not, you know, it's not completely uh, flat like you might think that, uh, uh, you know, even at a, a low grade, 
the DDGI volume can still produce um, pretty good results. It's certainly a, a very good way to do uh, distant GI is just to have like one very large world volume over your whole scene and then some uh, higher resolution uh, GI volume, like I said, that moves with the player uh, to blend with it. So you get, it's sort of like LODing your GI. As you, as you move, you get higher resolution GI closer to the player where it counts. The RTX GI update cost is uh, right at the moment three and a half milliseconds. But you'll notice the RTX GI apply lighting cost is very low. It's uh, about 0.15 milliseconds. That's fantastic. That uh, That's um, through a combination of the uh, uh, RTX GI scaler and uh, DLSS. Uh, the, the, the lower we can create that uh, applied resolution, uh, the faster the, the uh, RTX GI application cost is going to be. So in this case, the thing that's really costing us is just the dynamic GI update. Um, and that can be resolved in, in the, uh, the, the standard way. You just want to uh, go to your project settings. And let's take a look. The, and the probe rate budget might be a little bit higher than it should be. Uh, let's set it down to... Half, 300,000. The uh, RTX GI update cost is now under a millisecond and a half. And as you can see, the apply lighting cost is still very low. And of course, we have uh, full GI. So yeah, you just have to sort of uh, test it in your scene, see, see what that uh, probe ray budget should be set to. Um, like I said, there's no right or wrong number. It's usually somewhere in the hundreds of thousands. Uh, that might be a good starting point. I would note if you set the value too low, uh, RTX GI may not update at all. And obviously too high, you're not really constraining anything and, and you know, your, your numbers are just going to run away from you. So usually maybe a good starting point, you want like the maybe four to 500,000 range and then adjust it up and down. And of course, as you're doing, as you're setting up your scene, you can have that uh, project settings window open and be adjusting it in real time and get a sense for what the costs are and is it updating fast enough. So yeah, here we have RTX GI running at, you know, at a very high resolution and, um, you know, performance is, is very good. We're about a millisecond and a half uh, total cost for this. Um, and you can see what this looks like. This is just over, you know, a very large space. Uh, it almost doesn't matter where I go. The, um, the distant uh, sky dome here, I'll just, I'll go up in the air. Uh, the map is reasonably large, but not, you know, not as, it's not super huge, but it's, it's, it's pretty big. Um, the, the distant sky dome is actually an HDRI map. And it's uh, HDRI, if you have that plugin installed and enabled, it's uh, visible to ray tracing by default. So you can see the HDRI map reflecting in his outfit. Um, you can see it reflecting in the water when I look down. Um, it's also contributing to RTX GI. Uh, so it, it's doing, you know, very sort of physically accurate things, a, a lot of what you'd expect. I can show you as well a time of day change. So I just have it on a simple trigger here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trigger that and I'm, I'm rotating the sunlight. Right now, keep in mind when I did that, the distant GI is static, right? So I have a dynamic volume around the player, but the distant GI uh, is not updating. It's, it's remaining as is. But as you can see, a lot of times, especially with a big open world like this, you might be able to get away with a uh, static GI that's just applied. And as long as it's sort of producing, you know, like, uh, a, a minimum amount or a reasonable amount of, of, of color and shadow. It doesn't need a lot of precision necessarily. It'll look good at a distance, um, or at least it, it will look adequate. Uh, and again, we can look at that. There it is off, and there it is on. So it's giving us a, a decent contribution. That distance GI is extremely inexpensive because it's static and because uh, the probes are pretty pretty sparse. Um, it's It's only going... Like I said, it's only going to affect your apply lighting cost. So um, 
uh, you wouldn't have to do it that way. It could be fully dynamic. You'd pay just a slightly higher cost to do that. Um, uh, but if you wanted to keep it really efficient, this is a valid way to go. So again, I'll uh, keep rotating the, the sunlight a little bit. So now I've, I've got it swung around about, you know, 180 degrees the other way or something like that. And uh, I'll just ap approach the scene here. And, and you can see what happens. Like here's, you know, trees in the distance. And you can see the transition point if you're if you're really eagle-eyed, you can you can spot where the the uh, uh, the dynamic GI takes over from the static GI. Uh, this is where you know setting your blend distances right, um, and and tweaking out some of those values, tweaking out like uh, the relative light multipliers, um, you know, and and the irradiance bits for or the irradiance multiplier for each. Uh, uh, volume uh, can uh, uh, impact, you know, how well they blend together, how well does it look in the scene, uh, uh, details like this. As I move around through the world, I will uh, turn GI on and off. So you can see, see there it's off and there it's on. You know, direct lighting has really taken over um, because we're getting a lot of that right now, but you can see in the shadowed areas, GI on and off. Uh, how that impacts things, or GI off, GI on, GI off, GI on. So ISV volumes uh, are a very powerful tool. They give you they give you a good way to um, set up a, a you know a large dynamic world, something where you need GI everywhere and maybe not just in uh, specific rooms or parts of a map. Now this can be a little bit hard to see, so I've made the uh, the GI probes uh, a little bit bigger and fatter than than I'd normally want, but that's just to make it much easier to see what's going on. If I uh, pull out way over here, um, you can see here's uh, the world GI volume and how it's uh, surrounding the entire map, and then here this this uh, much a uh, denser GI volume is the one that surrounds the player. And you can see that even at this um, very high density, there's a, a number of probes at any point that have gone to gone to sleep, right? They're, they're no longer in consideration. Same thing up here, you know, because uh, they're not touching anything. Um, there's no geometry that they're, that they're you know, uh, gaining contribution from. So the system is intelligent in that it just puts a number of them to sleep. And this can... Um, it can make budgeting, figuring out what your probe ray budget, a little bit difficult to calculate because if you just do a straight calculation on the number of probes, um, you know, usually your number will be much higher. It might be like in the millions of rays and on paper, that's what you might think you need. In practice, you probably don't need that much. You might need a whole lot less because unless your scene is just completely dense with geometry at all points, which most scenes aren't. Uh, you're going to have a number of probes that are either underneath geometry or behind geometry or up in the air and maybe not touching anything that have functionally gone to sleep and uh, don't count towards your ray budget. Um, so you can off that's that's part of the reason why you can often get away with uh, uh, less rays in in practicality than than what you might see on paper. Okay, I want to thank you guys for uh, tuning in and. Uh, listening to everything I had to say today, that there's a lot to cover with RTXGI, um, a lot of different potential usages. Um, I think I said at the outset uh, that uh, you know I wasn't going to cover everything, um, but we got through a lot, and um, I, I hope this is a good uh, uh, sort of primer for you in how to use the plugin um, and how it can be useful to your projects. Uh, by all means. Uh, Hit us with questions. Uh, ask more uh, about uh, this technology and give us feedback because uh, we want to keep improving it. We want to make it even better. Uh, we're, we're very happy to get this plugin out, but RTXGI as a technology has been years in the making. Uh, and, and so many people have put a lot of effort into making this a reality. It's probably no small thing to say that really fast, 
um, infinite bounce lighting that's fully dynamic, uh, 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 that's very scalable. That's no small feat. And uh, the, the technology here is very impressive. It's very powerful. Um, and, uh, it, you know, it, it does a lot of everything that you might want for a real-time GI solution. Um, all that said, it can always be improved. So uh, um, uh, please reach out to us. Uh, give us more feedback. Um, we want to make it even better. And uh, I thank you again for your time.